Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi şurahli sadri ve sirli emri rahim yukarıda min lisani yefkavu kavli. Rabbena la tuzi gulubana fa'da iz hadaytana ve ahab lana min ladunke rahmeten inneke entel vahab. Allahümme erinel hakka hakkan verzukna ittibahu ve erinel batile batilen verzukna istinabahu. اللهم نظر قلوبنا واشرح صدورنا بنور القرآن والإيمان والإسلام وسأل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه والسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I apologize for the delay uh, I had it tiny technical detail the problem uh, inshallah you can hear me well right is there any problem with my voice sound okay alhamdulillah uh, inshallah we will <coughs> continue uh, reading from the 25th word uh, so this is uh, the first light of 25th word and we are studying the miraculousness of Quran from different aspects uh, so we are uh, again at the first light of the 25th word and under first light uh, we are studying uh, the first ray and under that uh, we are studying the second aspect of the first ray. Uh, and in this second aspect, uh, with uh, a few points, I guess it will go until the fifth point, uh, we study different uh, aspects of miraculousness uh, of uh, Quran, miraculousness of its uh, eloquence, let's say. And in the first point, uh, we studied the eloquence or let's say the miraculousness uh, in its uh, word order. How ordering of words are uh, chosen, are designed so that it would convey uh, the best ever, uh, let's say, uh, meaning but also style so best ever experience let's say of the reader so that was the first order the eloquence and the miraculousness of word order and then in the second uh, point uh, we studied the wonderful like, eloquence in its meaning how uh, meaning of the verses on top of the word order or on top of the style in general, how meaning of the uh, verses uh, are miraculous. So we studied a few examples, for instance, the, the, the ones talking about how everything in the creation glorifies the creator. And by doing so, this meaning uh, the meaning contained in these verses opened up a completely new universe in front of our eyes, in which everything, uh, without any exception, every cre uh, creature uh, as depicted as, uh, every creature is depicted as a living being, living creature, even a conscious, maybe, a creature. <clears throat> so such a meaning, such a revolutionary uh, meaning. And then in the third point, uh, we started studying the uh, uniqueness and the eloquence and miraculousness uh, in its style. How certain choices are made so that the attention of the reader would be uh, maximized. Things like uh, the letters, disjoint 
letters used at the beginning of uh, different surahs, like Elif, Lam, Ra, Ya, Sin, Ha, Mim, this kind of letters. Uh, we studied different, like a few wisdoms, as we can see in these disjointed letters, <clears throat> but without any, uh, I guess, doubt, without any uh, disagreement, uh, the uniqueness in this style was so obvious. Uh, we studied a few other, uh, you know, the aspects of this style, uniqueness of uh, its style in the third point. And inshallah, we will continue today with still with the third point. Uh, so it's about the uniqueness and the miraculousness of a style of a surahs. And inshallah, we will continue with uh, <clears throat> two, maybe three uh, new uh, surahs. Uh, so two of them are from uh, Surah Yasin, uh, which is the 36th uh, surah. Uh, we will study two tiny ayah from these two surahs, not even the complete ayahs, just the fragments uh, within these ayahs. But if you don't mind, as uh, we do, uh, like as we done this for uh, last few weeks, the, I will read the passage from Surah Yasin, uh, not a short one, to see how these two uh, ayah fit to, like, let's say, uh, a kind of a bigger picture. Okay, so the ayahs, two ayahs that we will read are the 38 and 39. Uh, these two ayahs we will read, uh, study specifically, inshallah. Uh, but let's start with, uh, let's say, uh, 30. Uh, we can, we could go even maybe a uh, little bit more uh, further, but uh, for the sake of time, uh, let's start with uh, Ayah 30, okay, 3-0. So again, this is uh, Surah Yasin, which is 36, and we will uh, start reading from Ayah 30. I send it. Uh, for those who are interested, uh, send a true chat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. How regretful for the servants. There didn't come to them any messenger except that they used to ridicule him. There didn't come to them any messenger except that they used to ridicule him. They have not considered how many generations, sorry, have they not considered how many generations we destroyed before them, that they to them will not return? There is something missing. I, I'm sorry. Let's start reading uh, from the Arabic. Uh, I, I couldn't get, uh, you know, the feeling. Uh, let's uh, start reading from the Arabic first, inshallah, and then uh, we can go back to uh, reading the translation. So I need uh, a volunteer, as you would guess, uh, to read Atik. Yes, Jazak Maharan. So uh, could you uh, either from screen or if you have any other uh, means, uh, could you like start reading from uh, 30 uh, until uh, 40, including 40? Would you want me to do Arabic and then English or Arabic and English for each ayah and then keep going? Uh, just for, 
a minute, well, give me a minute, please. I still have a issue with my, sorry. Okay, now I should be able to hear you, if you don't mind. Okay, so would you want me to do the first, the whole, like ten ayat in Arabic, and then uh, go back? Yes, in inshallah. English. Yes, okay. read it for, uh, from thirty to forty, including forty. So it will be eleven ayat actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then we we can start reading the translation, inshallah. All right, inshallah. Audo bin Ahmed Shaitan Raji. يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية, وآية لهم الأرض ميتة ميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها جن حب حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من من ثم ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ وَالْقَمَرَ قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلَ حَتَّى عَادَ كَالْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ لَالشَّمْسُ ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا, ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون جزاكم خيرا Okay, let's uh, read the translation now إن شاء الله Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. How regretful for the servants. There didn't come to them any messenger except that they used to ridicule him. Have they not considered how many generations we destroyed before them, that they to them will not return? And indeed, all of them will yet be brought present before us. And the sign for them is the dead earth. We have brought it to life and brought forth from it grain, and from it they eat. And we place therein gardens of palm trees and grape vines, and cause to burst forth therefrom some springs, that they may eat of his fruit and their hands have not produced it. So will they not be grateful? Exalted is he who created all pairs, from what the earth grows, and from themselves and from that which they do not know. And the sign for them is the night we remove from it they saw that they are in darkness. And the sun runs towards its stopping point. That is the determination of the exalted in might, the knowing. And the moon, we have determined for it phases, 
until it returns like the old date stock. Stock. It is not allowable, allowable for the sun to reach the moon, nor does the night overtake the day, but each in an orbit is swimming. Okay, this is uh, a kind of the bigger picture for uh, the ayahs uh, that we will study, again, 38 and 39, inshallah, in the reverse order, we will study first 39 and then 38. Uh, this uh, Surah Yasin, uh, definitely about many things, but one core uh, topic, theme, is prophethood, messenger, and our relationship with messengers, and how messengers are the prime source and the message they bring, how it is the prime source for our understanding or let's say our believing in afterlife, life after death. And how the creation universe, our lives, are full of evidence for afterlife. And here, the, the passage that we read from Surah Yahasin, uh, talking about how people vehicle messengers. Uh, mostly due to the message they bring, because it either disturbs their daily lives or the lives that they used to uh, live, the lives that they used to carry on. And also due to the, the meanings that these message messages uh, convey talking about hereafter, talking about uh, eternal life, talking about eternal happiness or eternal uh, torment, punishment, pain. So Quran says, how dare you ridicule them, although in front of your eyes, it's full of evidence, uh, full of confirmation for the message they carry. And here, inshallah, we will start, uh, study the style of these two uh, specific uh, ayahs, again, 38 and 39. And with how, it, how with the style of these ayahs, Quran uh, depicts and conveys uh, this miraculous uh, meanings. So let's start reading from the text. If you, if you don't have anything to add, just uh, in the you know context of Surah Yasin. Uh, if you want to say something, you are more than welcome. Or maybe asking questions. Otherwise, uh, we can start reading from the text. Okay, let's continue with the text, inshallah. So I realize it's been really long time since, as a moderator, I uh, haven't asked people for volunteers to read. For some reason, we switched our style and, you know, uh, now we have humble moderators who do not, you know, order things, who do not, you know, uh, ask people to read. Uh, we used to have uh, such uh, tyrant moderators like myself, but something happened. We now have these... Uh, soft moderators. So I, you know, 
said to myself, well, maybe Birkan, it's time to switch back and ask people to read for yourself, like instead of you. So that's what I'm going to do, inshallah. So I need a volunteer uh, to read the text uh, for us, inshallah. It will be fun, I promise. <laughs> Just like all good days. Atik, uh, So, uh, Atik, would you like to read from the, the screen or are you going to use your own uh, device or book? I, I have uh, my the online book open. Okay. You can tell me what pages or where Okay, to read. great. Uh, so, in my page, this is uh, 394, but if you don't have the same book with me, you can uh, go to this link I'm sending through chat. Uh, which is 387, I guess, the page number. Mm -hmm. So we will start from uh, the part that we see on screen. For example, consider the words like an old date, date stalk. Mm -hmm. uh, just let me know when you find it. I have it. Okay. Uh, from there to the end of the third point, so till the fourth point, you will see. Uh, there will be a title saying fourth point. Okay. It will be so like a, almost two pages, less than two pages. Sure, no problem. No, nothing for you, yeah. It's no, just, no yeah, problem. <laughs> All right. For example, consider the words like an old date stock withered and curved in um, Quran 36, uh, 39. Uh, see what a subtle style it displays. It is like this. One of the moon's mansions is in the Pleiades. The Quran likens the moon when it is a crescent to a withered and whitened old date stock. Through this simile, it depicts with the eye of the imagination, a tree behind the green veil of the skies. One of its white curved luminous branches has rent the veil and raised its head the Pleiades are like a bunch of grapes on the branch and the other stars, all luminous fruits of that hidden tree of creation. If you have any discernment, you will understand what an appropriate, graceful, subtle, and elevated style and manner of expression this is in the view of the desert dwellers for whom the date palm is the most important means of livelihood. And for example, as it is pro proven at the end of the 19th word, the words runs the words runs its course in, and the sun runs its course to a place appointed, uh, Quran 36, 38, opens a window onto an elevated style as follows with the words runs its course, that is, the sun revolves. It puts in the mind the maker's tremendousness by recalling the orderly disposals of divine power in the alternations of winter and summer and day and night and directs one's gaze to the missives of the eternally besought one inscribed by the pen of power on the pages of the seasons. It proclaims the wisdom of the all glorious creator. And with the word lamp in and set the sun as a lamp, Quran 71, 16, it opens a window onto the style like this. It makes one understand the maker's majesty and creator's bounty by recalling that the world is a place, a palace, and the, that the things within it are adornments, food, and necessities prepared for man and living creatures, and that the sun is, subser is a subservient candle, demonstrating that the sun is an evidence of God's unity and that the idolaters his greatest, most brilliant object of worship is merely a subjugated lamp, an inanimate creature. That is to say, the word lamp calls to mind the creator's mercy within the grandeur of his dominicality. It recalls his favors within the breath of his mercy, and in doing so, informs of his munificence within the majesty of his sovereignty, thereby proclaiming divine unity and saying indirectly, 
an inanimate and subservient lamp is in no way fit to be worshipped. And in the course of runs its course, it calls to mind the wondrous orderly disposal of divine power in the revolutions of night and day and winter and summer. And in doing so, in so doing, makes known the grandeur of a single maker's power in his, in his dominicality. That is to say, it turns man's mind from the points of the sun and moon to the pages of night and day and winter and summer and draws his attention to the lines of events written on those pages. For the Quran does not speak of the sun for the sake of the sun, but for the one who illuminates it. Also, it does not speak of the sun's nature, for which man has no need, but of the sun's duty, which is that of mainspring for the order of dominical art and center of the order of dominical creativity and a shuttle for the harmony and order of dominical art in the things the pre-eternal ins inscriber weaves with the threads of day and night. You can compare others of the Quran's wise, the Quran's words with these. While all are simple, ordinary words, each performs the duty of a key to treasuries of subtle meanings. It is because the Quran's style is for the greater part elevated and brilliant in the ways described above that on occasion, Arabic Arab nomads were captivated by a single phrase and without being Muslims were prostrate. One nomad prostrated on hearing the phrase, therefore, proclaim openly what you are commanded, Quran 1594. When asked, have you become a Muslim? He replied, no, I am prostrating at the eloquence of these words. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you very much. It's good to be moderator, I can say. Just, you know, sitting in your chair, listening to people, reading for you. So what's good in being moderator if you don't do that? Uh, <clears throat> anyway, let's start discussing, inshallah. Any uh, opening comments? Any questions, you know, the, the impression that you had uh, before we dive into uh, these uh, ayahs deeply? Yusuf, please go ahead. <clears throat> so in the previous weeks, we talked about chapters, <clears throat> like letters, chapters, sentences. Now this week we are focusing on words and uh, like the choice of words in Quran carrying so much meaning is I guess what we are going to study today. And uh, it's a beautiful way of looking at the text also, but the text itself having this capacity to uh, like carefully choosing those words so that every word has so much weight is uh, very beautiful and I guess this is what inshallah we will study today uh, so I just wanted to highlight that uh, his I mean emphasis is all about the words oh just like the hiron so just to uh, just to you know to, to prevent the confusion uh, for next week. So I believe, I assume, uh, when Yusuf says it's about words, uh, he's uh, referring to not individual words, but uh, overall style, wording style, let's say, uh, of the ayahs. Because when it comes to specific words, we will inshallah study uh, next week in the fourth point. It will be, this is the wonderful eloquence in its wording, that is in the words employed. So when it comes to the specific words, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is possible. Uh, we will study next week, uh, but this week, as Yusuf also uh, uh, mentioned, uh, we are studying the overall style of these wordings, let's say. How, uh, a, a feeling, a, 
experience, uh, uh, perception is conveyed through uh, use the, the selection of the words. This is what we are studying uh, today, as far as I uh, understand. Yusuf, your hand is still uh, raised. Is it like uh, if you want to? Okay. Um, okay, let's start without further ado. <clears throat> For example, consider the words like an old date stock. So there's a phrase uh, like an old date stock uh, here as part of uh, the aya. And the author is going to talk about this uh, phrase, how use of such a phrase reminds uh, readers uh, different things. For example, consider the words like an old date stalk, uh, withered and curved in. So it's, I guess, like a dried, uh, curved, uh, if you know, like if you look at the trees, as they get older and you know, when they die sometimes, uh, what happens, they, the, the branches, they become uh, dry and curved. So they're not straight anymore, right? Especially uh, the branches that uh, carry uh, fruits or uh, similarly, if you are, uh, you know, uh, growing plants at home, uh, when you are doing your job good, well, and your uh, plants are lively, when you enjoy their view, uh, you will see them like they're straight, they they strong, right? They there's uh, what it's called stem, anyway. But as they die, as they fade down, you see them, they dried and curved. Like the shape is uh, changing. For example, consider the words like an uh, old date stalk withered and curved in curved in, sorry, uh, in following Aya, and the moon we have determined mentions for till it returns like an old date stalk, withered and curved. See what a subtle style it displays. It is like this, one of the moon's mentions you can take it as, I guess, stopping points. So it goes from one phase to another phase, uh, one place to another place. Uh, I assume everybody uh, here knows that stars and planets and the moon, uh, they move in sky. They don't, they don't stay wh where they are. As time goes, uh, seasons change, they Actually, every day they change. Their location will change, right? Moon uh, will have different places in the uh, sky. And depending on the place it is, you know, located in a given uh, time, it might be seen as a part of a different uh, Is it called constellation? Correct me if I'm wrong, please. My constellation? Constellation, yes, okay. Uh, it may seem part of different constellations or star groups. Uh, because when, when we look uh, from far away uh, from the Earth, the stars look, you know, as if uh, on a flat plane, right? As if they are together uh, forming different shapes. Uh, but in 3D, we know that there are uh, the huge 
distance between them in terms of depth as well. So from our perspective, they look like uh, being part of different star groups or constellations or whatever they call. Uh, and moon also moves in the sky and one of its, let's say, uh, stopping point, it's uh, Pleiades. It's one of these uh, star groups. See what a subtle uh, style it displays. It is like one of the moon's mansions is in the Pleiades. The crown likens the moon when it is a crescent to a withered and with whitened old date stock. So when it is a crescent, like a very tiny, uh, slim uh, object, it looks as if a withered and whitened old date stock. Through this uh, smile, the example or uh, you know, similitude it comes from, it depicts for the eye of the imagination a tree behind the green veil of the skies. I don't know why he calls green veil, uh, possibly during the night time, or the author used to see sky as uh, dark greenish, maybe from the place uh, he was. Uh, be behind the green veil of the skies, one of its wide curved luminous branches has rent the veil and raised its head. So as if there's a tree behind the veil of the skies and one of its branches just uh, rent the veil, like open it a little gate and raise its head, which is moon, the platers are like a bunch of grapes on the branch. So when moon seems like a part of this platers or close to it, uh, these uh, star group platers will look like a bunch of grapes on the branch on the moon, like hanged on the moon, and other stars, all luminous fruits of that hidden uh, tree creation. Uh, by the way, just allow me to correct myself. Pleiades is not the name of the star group. It's just the name of one star. But doesn't matter. The old depiction, <laughs> uh, the same. If you have any discernment, if you have any discernment, if you have, in Turkish it says zevk, like if you have any taste, uh, if your imagination, let's say, uh, opened to such possibilities, if you have any discernment, you will understand what an appropriate, graceful, subtle and elevated style and manner of expression this is in the view of the desert dwellers for whom the date palm is the most important means of livelihood. So let's stop here and let's uh, study this part in depth. Any first impressions? Uh, Yusuf, please go ahead. So, um, as at the very beginning, we read the verses. So it was at the position in terms of Surah Yasin. The, these verses are coming at the position where uh, people denied their messenger, mocked them. Then uh, the creator challenged them with afterlife because they denied the message of afterlife of the messengers. 
and the Creator challenged them with resurrection and afterlife, and then gave the example of starting with uh, things that come out of Earth, like things being created in pairs, like the fruits and everything. Then in this, there, there was a cluster of verses, like three, four verses, I don't know the number. Then comes the next cluster of verses in which now the creator talks about the skies, gives examples from the skies. Initially, it was examples from the earth, uh, how things are being resurrected and sustenance is being provided from earth in pairs. And it was concluding with uh, in pairs from things that you do not know also. So from the things that we have seen was giving us an example of the things that we have not seen because life is being coupled with life after death and other life after death. Then in these verse, the creator starts talking about sustenance from the skies, how the uh, sun and the moon is within a order. And the author is now mentioning that Actually, by the use of word date stalk, withered, and curved, uh, it's somewhat implying another source of, if you like, garden, which is behind the scenes, behind the skies, behind the sama, uh, highlighting that sustenance is not only on the earth for you, there is sustenance on the, uh, on the skies for you too, in the sama too, and uh, Sema having two meanings. One is the skies, but it's also the uh, metaphor for from on high, from behind the uh, veil of the unseen. And by using the word al-Qadim as if this is a uh, date stalk withered and curved like a branch of, like branch made up of light comes out of from behind or uh, piercing through the curtain that hides the unseen and coming out of it as if saying that there are trees of light sustenance for you behind the unseen but it's not inaccessible to you here is how uh, it, it is coming to you and it although it all already used the word uh, a date stock withered and curved it makes us think about that concept. How does a date stalk withered and cured a branch of a dry date palm look like? There's a fruit on at the end of it. So as if also reminding me that when you look at the creation, nothing in the creation is by random, by chance. So that scene that you observe the moon in the crescent mode and you see uh, stars as if gives you the impression of this uh, date palm and its fruits, Quran is saying that, let me read you what that verse in the creation means. That verse in the creation is a highlight that your sustenance is not only on earth, your sustenance is also in the skies. We are the ones that give you uh, sustenance for your soul, light, because in the darkness we are in search of light. And the creator says, I, I give you that. From skies, from on high, I give you guidance. I give you light. So, and this is what this nighttime sky and especially this crescent and the uh, clusters of stars should highlight to you. You have a sustenance in the other realms in behind the uh, like Sama, behind the curtain of unseen, there is also your sustenance. Seek for it. As you are seeking for your sustenance on earth, there is your sustenance behind the this veil of darkness, if you like, and there is light behind this darkness. So this imagery of uh, this, uh, what's it, sharp, dried branch, piercing through that darkness, whale of darkness, is also telling you to search for it, be hopeful of it, and in, the, in seeking that, reaching the light. So very beautifully, 
uh, the words are reminding me of source of sustenance and alternative source of sustenance, which will, and if we we'll now look at the larger scale of how the verses are put for the purpose of reminding me of resurrection, saying that you were worried about your uh, body rotting under the earth. First examples told us that we are the one that give you those uh, sustenance, the fruits and everything for your bodily resurrection. You already see the example of bodily resurrection. When it comes to your non-bodily feelings, like, okay, I want eternity. I don't want to die. I want to have, uh, I want to be satiated with all my feelings. So now things are going to the skies, really, as they say, uh, the limit is the sky. When it comes to my desires, truly limit is the sky. And now, as if these verses are saying that when it comes to sky, when even if we were to give you the whole earth, you will you know that you're not going to be satisfied. But as for the skies, your sustenance is beyond the skies and it is there. It's not that it's a dark uh, darkness for you. Behind this dark whale is light and uh, moon with the uh, Pleiades is signifying that or is a sign I put in there so that you will know that there is sustenance for you in the sky behind the whales. Search for it, which means here's the Quran. Quran is speaking from behind that whale to you. Actually, the Quran is in a sense this Urujun al-Qadim for you. So start collecting your uh, what, uh, fruits from that tree. This is the light that you're looking for for your spirit as well. As we resurrect your body, as we can and we will resurrect your body, we will resurrect your soul as we show you that your sustenance of your soul is not, uh, we are not lacking a sustenance for that either. Jazakallah uh, very beautifully uh, summarized. Oh, any other comments? Any other questions regarding this part? I hope people will help me. Okay, while you're thinking, let me recorrect myself. I will correct my previous correction uh, because Pleiades is a star uh, cluster. It's not just one single star. It's a star group. Uh, so one thing, so we're studying the style of the Quran and the author says it's really important, it's miraculous, it's style, that, uh, it's uh, without any word. Uh, the, it's, sorry, it's not, uh, it's really hard to explain with words. It's, like there's this uh, wonderful eloquence, uh, uniqueness uh, in its style. And with this uh, specific uh, ayah, the author is talking about how these ayahs uh, letting reader, the people who hear or uh, read these ayahs, to live in a certain, uh, or let's say, a feel, a certain background, feel in a certain way. It puts us in a, uh, I don't know how to uh, say, uh, certain disposition, right? especially as author says, for the first, uh, the addressee of these uh, ayahs, uh, desert dwellers, looking at moon and seeing it as a, a palm tree uh, that uh, the, the branch of a, a palm uh, tree that they know that they uh, you know, the, the experience from the first hand and reading these ayah, 
make perfect one-to-one -one match with their life. So this ayah does not only give them some, let's say, information saying that, okay, there's one who created the moon and there is one who, you know, let moon uh, follow a certain orbit and travel one from one mansion to one stopping point to another stopping point. This is not the whole, uh, you know, deal, whole idea with this ayah. It's not the... the you know, the, the only thing that this Aya provides, but it puts you in a certain uh, oh, please, somebody help me on the words. Anyway, it puts you in a certain uh, feeling, certain mood? Uh, condition, mood. Jazakallah Yes, thank you. Uh, I didn't see who he was, help me, but uh, thank you, everyone. It puts you a certain mood that you know, that you experienced before. Uh, so there's a connection with your life. So this goes back to, uh, you know, uh, one uh, theory, theory of mind uh, that I claim people know uh, by uh, experiencing, by knowing. So you know as much as you uh, the feel you experience what is uh, what is conveyed, what is explained to you. So you, you, you cannot know about fear without, you know, having this uh, feeling of the fear. Uh, you cannot know about being a worshiper or uh, being created, let's say, uh, without living it, without putting it into action. So same here, the ayah, it's not just telling us that I created things and I give you sustenance. It lets us taste the grapes that the uh, sustainer uh, gives us, bestows upon us. And while eating these grapes, the ayah teaches us that there is a sustainer uh, behind this sustenance. So you have to taste these grapes to know about the sustenance, to know about the sustainer. And this ayah does exactly this. It talks about the grapes that you eat in your life. It talks about the date palm, date, uh, palm trees that you know in your life. These examples, uh, similitudes. And I, I guess it is not uh, any exaggeration to make an extrapolation here and say that just like, you know, uh, the, uh, the moon in its crescent form remind us something that we experience in our life. And through these reminders, it teaches us the sustainer, the sustenance. Everything in our life is just an example and nothing more. So I guess in the uh, following text, it will be uh, clearer when author says, uh, Quran does not speak of the sun for the sake of the sun. Quran does not speak of the sun for the sake of uh, sun, but for the one who illuminates it. So, so I guess the same way we can say everything in our life, every tiny experience we have in our life is nothing 
but just an example. Nothing but a similitude to teach us, to remind us about our creator. So your car, for instance, yes, you can look at your car as a car and then gene and the seats and the fact that it traveled and take you from one place to another place. But these are all nothing but just an example of something real, something beyond them. Because the example is not like, uh, in one sense, is not the real thing, right? The real thing is what this example refers to. When you try to teach something to your child, you give some examples, or your students or your friends, you give some examples, but the examples, they don't matter much, whether they are real or made up, whether the color of the car in the example is red or blue, it doesn't matter much. So I guess the life is the same way. What we go through, this, uh, you know, the, the first aspect of it that we interact with, it's not the real thing. It's there just for a purpose. You are supposed to read it, use it, feel it, and through which you get the real lesson, what it means, what it refers to. This is real. So with its unique style, Quran tells us the same thing, does the same thing. It says, look at the moon. It looks like something, doesn't it? doesn't it? It tells you, it reminds you something. It reminds you your sustenance, your sustainer. Do you know what? You can apply the same thing to everything in your life. The fight you had with your uh, mom or your boss or your you know, husband or your friend, it doesn't mean by itself, it doesn't mean anything. Whatever you experience through this fight, where this experience takes you, is what matters. The food that you just ate and enjoyed, it's just uh, nothing but a smooth, just an example of something. And it's interesting, it's also uh, like when heaven is depicted in Quran, uh, I can't remember the exact phrasing, may Allah forgive me, but uh, there's this uh, phrase, like we had the examples or similar things to them in our worldly life. Like when we were alive in the earth, uh, the people will say, oh, we had uh, something similar. An example of it was given to us on earth, or is being given to us. We see all these examples of eternal life. We see all these examples of eternal sustenance. But the example is there to be consumed, not you know, in the way that we use uh, you know, the word consume in a uh, culture of consumption, but to be digested, to be, you know, uh, experienced and the meaning out of it extracted. The real taste will be there then. I spoke that, I apologize. Uh, Yusuf, you were raising your hand, please go ahead. Okay, I guess uh, yeah. oh, I'm right. struggling with Zainab on the side. So uh, I guess you already said what I was planning to say. That's why I uh, put my hand down. But I guess in uh, summary, if I want to repeat what I had in mind was, uh, this is like a poetic use of the language, 
but it's it's not like some artistically speaking in a beautiful way it is kind of telling me that the creator is artistically speaking through the creation also so pay attention to that uh, and as you said it's not only some intellectual way of teaching things so as if the creation is telling answers giving answers to my questions and when i say question the first thing that comes to mind is intellectual questions but it's not only that my question for eternal life is a question is a problem which requires some answer so as if the uh, by use of this language this uh, poetic language in the speech and considering that quran is speech of the creator in words how about the creation the creation is the speech of the creator in if you like matter or in uh, like flesh and bones and stones and clouds and everything so the same poetic uh, style is there which means it speaks to all your faculties not only to your intellect but also to your feelings so as such read the universe with all your senses benefit from this universe as it speaks to your uh, desire for love, your desire for eternity, your desire for, I don't know, whatever is in there that we consider uh, sacred and beautiful in poetry is available in the existence as well. But the author, the poet of the universe has put it in there. So look at it from that perspective. Because uh, when I check myself i find out that uh sometimes i find it funny maybe because i am too much inclined to model things with like intellectual models or whatever like trying to extract such a meaning from the existence makes as if i force i load those meanings to the existence i mean it's not there but i am enforcing it on it but by the creator or the poet of the existence suggesting me that this is how it can be read is an encouragement. I mean, if, if it was like the creator says, no, 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 don't make things up by yourself. Yeah, I, I would say since it's your speech, I need to read it as you suggest me to read it. But in here, this is how the creator or the poet of the existence suggests to read the poetry of the existence. So suggesting me to say, look, this is how uh, the skies can be read, another way of reading the skies. So it's very beautiful in this sense, a uh, warm way of inviting me to interact with the existence around me. Jazakla uh, Hiram, this is really important. Uh, <laughs> So one the thing you said, it's uh, like, I don't want to uh, digress for, uh, uh, go too much tangential, tangential, but uh, I think it's really important that uh, when you say, you know, sometimes we feel that as if I'm uh, loading these meanings to the you know, the things I see and so on, as if they are not there. This worry is so, at least to me, it's so dangerous. Because we, I believe, we thought just the opposite of reality. We thought that you should, you know, discard yourself from the image, what you see, you, you should forget about your feelings. You should forget about how you feel, what kind of mood you are. And then reality will open up itself to you. This is what we told. But I believe, I think it's just the opposite. What most matters is your mood, is what kind of state you are how you are conditioned, the background, context, which is defined by nothing by you, not defined by you, sorry, 
are defined with you, around you. And what Quran does, it's with its unique style, it conditions you. It puts you in a state. You know, to, to make all your feelings alive. Uh, configures you right, first and then once your imagination once your mind is open it uh, you know let the information of however you want to call the, the, the truth go go to your mind the travel to your mind but I guess to get the maximum out of it, to, to understand Quran most, you have to let it to condition you, to put you in a state just like this ayah. First, you have to think, you have to bring your mind, bring your imagination that all the grapes that you ate, And remember how you felt when sustenance was given to you. And then you will understand the sustainer. At least to me, this is the one big reason Quran talks about, you know, the, 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 the tiny things that we know from our daily lives to condition us, to put in a state that will live the moment and then uh, learn about the reality as Quran speaks to us. The same way, when you see rain, the most important thing, how rain is important for you, valuable for you. How rain and life is connected in your life. How rain brings life to earth from up skies. And once you feel this, when you, once you experience things, this, when you understand this, the rest will speak to you and say that your sustainer sends life to earth from skies. And when you look at rain, then you will see nothing but sustenance. You will see nothing but life giving. Otherwise, with the method that we are all taught and raised, with our education, by edu our education system, when we look at the rain, we will see nothing but some droplets with certain speed uh, becoming part of some mechanisms, processes. And then when somebody tells us that, oh, life is coming down, we will say, you're just loading your own meaning. Uh, to what you see. It's just the opposite. The other guy, other me, is just blind, doesn't see anything. Okay, any other uh, comments, disagreements, questions, insults? Yusuf, please go ahead. I said insult and you raised your I hand. I think since you said you're going to be a harsh moderator today, but you didn't show any harshness. So I thought maybe I should point fingers to someone. Would you like me to do that? <laughs> Nobody spoke. What, what's what's up with those people? I, I don't mind. Like it would be uh, your affair. So oh, I cannot interfere. So you are more than welcome to do that. I guess I can pick on Abdurrahman since he is the default guy that I can pick on if he's still around <laughs> anyways people please go 
let us hear from uh, what, what is your take from those verses. Otherwise, we can continue with the next verse. So poetry and artistry, the, I guess, at the core of the style of the Quran, uh, again, just the style. Otherwise, Quran itself uh, denied that it's not a poetry. But this artistry is, uh, is so important. The, the word it creates around you. Uh, I think it's so important. Uh, Aishinur, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, yeah, please don't take my silence so far to be a uh, symbol of my disinterest. Um, I guess, and I guess um, what I'm thinking so far is, you know, along with everything you've said about how I can't remove myself from the equation, right? Even though that's what we're always taught, that uh, the significance of anything that I'm experiencing is precisely um, the relationship that I have with whatever that thing is. Um, so today, for example, it was very cloudy. It was just kind of a dark day and I'm, I'm someone easily affected by, by the weather or the season. And I felt very downcast. And then I was kind of grumbling all about winter and how it's kind of, I mean, this is my internal monologue, of course, about how it's just kind of depressive and um, kind of, you know, the days are short too. You don't get much sunlight. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, even even in that interaction, it's the significance of precisely that the cloudiness of the day is so that I can come to realize something about myself, is so that I can come to realize what it makes me feel. Um, perhaps the um, truth it makes me realize about myself as well. Um, about the seasons of my own life, about my own aging, about um, how I am in need of, of sunlight and sunlight being something more than just sunlight, but something that brings me warmth and happiness and hope. Um, and I was just thinking, you know, if like at first glance at this verse and the moon we have determined mansions for till it returns like an old date stock withered and crib, like there's no way to understand that without, without kind of, uh bringing yourself into it i mean it's there's imagery there there's in terms of style right there's there's something there to be interpreted and um and right before you were making these comments about poetry i was thinking that you know as much as um i guess scientific things or academic things might always be about removing yourself from uh the equation poetry is precisely about inserting yourself in it you know even it, the author of the poem is not even that important. It's all about what the reader um, experiences and interprets and comes to extract from, you know, reading a set of verses. Uh, and I guess just one other thing that I wanted to mention, and I don't have any concrete thoughts on this, is um, if you just go to the next page, because I'm, I'm kind of following along with uh, Zoom. Uh, where was it? Um, no, no, don't go too down. Go up, up, up. Or was it the verses themselves? I don't know. I, I but it was it was about how um, you know the the object of of study is not the nature of the sun, right? I, mean, I think that was actually more down. Um, yeah, there we go. It says also it does not speak of the sun's nature for which man has no need, but of the sun's duty. And that, that was really interesting to me because 
I guess it, for me, it's saying, don't waste your time with um, that which is of no use to you, that uh, not necessarily that which is abstract, but that which is abstract and, you know, useless in terms of what you seek. Um, like I have to bring my own needs, right? For which man has known. And I have to bring my own needs to the table because if I don't bring my own needs to the table, then I can't benefit. Then I can't take from there anything that which is going to actually, uh, you know, bring me guidance. And I guess, um, you know, when I approach the Quran, it has to be for uh, guidance to, to the questions I have about myself, my existence, you know, existing as a human being within this universe. And so if I, I it, it is of necessity that I bring myself to the table, bring my own needs to the table. And, um, and so that's, that's how I interpreted this, this sentence here in the text, but um, I thought that was interesting. And just thank you for the overall discussion so far on behalf of my family. <laughs> Um, your whole family, of course, uh, not only you. Uh, so let's continue with the next verse then. And for example, as is prov proven at the end of the 19th word, the words runs its course runs its course so this phrase in the following ayah and the sun runs its course to a place appointed uh, this is uh, Yasin 38 opens a window onto an elevated style as follows With the words runs its course, that is, the sun revolves, it puts in mind the maker's tremendousness by recalling the orderly disposals of divine power in the alternations of winter and summer and day and night and directs one's gaze to the missives of the eternally besought one inscribed by the pen of power on the pages of the seasons. It proclaims the wisdom of the all glorious create, uh, creator. It proclaims the wisdom of the all glorious creator. Uh, you might uh, heard a cry from a little baby. She's crying because today I couldn't hang, like uh, hold her enough. She misses me, but I cannot because I have to speak because nobody speaks currently. If some people were here to help me speak on behalf of me in, in, uh, instead of me while listening to you, I could hug her and put her misery an end, uh, but people wouldn't let me. Okay, let's start discussing this. And the sun runs its course to a place appointed. Any initial comments? Sun runs its course to the place appointed. Uh, I think, please go ahead. I don't have any sophisticated um, ideas that, that come to my mind from that, but what does come to mind is that that there, there, the, the sun has a goal. That there's a that there's a end point. That it's not just you know countless cycles, uh, you know back and forth around and around for for no reason. But there's a 
discrete, specific uh, place it's headed to that it's uh, that is appointed. Jazakallah uh, Hayan. I think this is the whole point of the ayah. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, I I totally agree. Like I think it's all about the goal, the order, and how such a goal only achieved by a divine power, like a, by the disposals of a divine power. Uh, so, Jazakallah Hayan. I shall please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Uh... I'm for Bishra, for Bishra's sake. Uh, hopefully, I can say something. And as Atik said, it's not sophisticated by any means. But you know, it's a very short, short verse, anyways. You know, the sun runs its course. Um, and I guess something that I realize in myself is, you know, I generally just don't think about the sun, or I don't look at the sun, or it's just I take it very much for granted uh you know this whole day and night cycle actually uh, you know with the moon we were speaking before and now the sun it's it just happens you know it's just a very normal thing that happens every day and but it's so interesting actually that you know it, everything just becomes dark and then everyone goes to sleep and then the sun rises and then everyone gets up and the whole commotion and daily life just goes like you know full Full, like 100 everyone is just like running around uh, when the sun runs uh, rises and it just it just keeps happening like that and i would never really stop and look at the sun and be like why is it doing this is there a purpose behind it and when you know such a short phrase the sun runs its course or here it says the sun is set as a lamp you know these very short phrases but it just you know it, it makes me question wait a second, th what sun are you talking about? This thing I've always taken for granted, this thing that I just thought would always exist, you know, the sun, uh, maybe I sometimes I get angry at or sometimes I'm ha I enjoy the warmth, sometimes like, why is it so warm? You know, I, I always ha have these feeling stories, but I never consider, why is it doing this? Is there someone that put it there to do it? You know, is there truly such a power that could have placed the sun that is so powerful in our solar system yet it's so such a tiny star compared to other stars you know uh i think such a short phrase it just makes me question the things i take for granted and uh yeah thank you jazakallah uh, such a again important point uh, reminding us that the things that we take as granted are so uh, powerful so mighty. Uh, as you said, with such a short uh, phrase, such a short uh, ayah, even with the, like a single uh, phrase, the sun revolves or takes its course, uh, runs its course. It reminds us a lot because sun is the is at the center of many things in our life. Uh, so, so, for instance, the author gives a few examples here: alternations of uh, seasons, alternations of day and night. How important they are. And how everything related to each other, the sun being part of all of them, and its course, how it shapes almost everything in our life, how big power is exemplified with sun, just by revolving. The, the fact that it revolves exemplifies such a big power, such a big divine power, such a big uh, judgment, the order. And like uh, Atik was saying, uh, you know, I wouldn't say something important, but even the word he said, like order, goal, such a courageous goal to be articulated in our time, that something has a goal, something has a purpose. 
even reminding to, to us by saying sun runs its course. So there's a course that it runs. There's a course that it takes. There's a goal. There's a purpose there. There's an order there. Reminding us th this really critical fact it's so important, I guess. Uh, in the following text, we will talk more about the purpose from our perspective, and it will become even more uh, closely connected to our life. So sun will be uh, in me truly then. So this is all I have. Uh, we are almost out of time. Uh, like considering a few minutes uh, that we start laying. Uh, of course, the stage is open for your uh, final comments, questions. Otherwise, we can stop here. Okay, let's stop here, inshallah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta lalimul hakim al-fatiha.